In this video, I'm going to quickly go over the four components of combat marksmanship. Now, none of these things are fundamental by uh, nature in absolute because no situation is really always going to be the same and allow you to do the same thing every time. You might be in a retention position where you're barely able to grab the gun and you might not be pulling the trigger slow. You might not be pulling the trigger fast. That's why there's no dogmatic fundamentalism, right? So. <laughs> uh, I don't call, I don't call them fundamentals because realistically speaking, they none of them are really fundamental universally. So, with that said, the four that are uh, the four components are stance, grip, sights, and trigger. So let's go ahead and delve into them. Some of these have principles that you just have to adhere to, which is like being mindful of and making sure that you're adhering to a couple of ideas and that you can check these in the box check them off in the box so stance stance or position so uh, when it comes to stance you need to make sure that you're adhering to uh, principles of stability and mobility now if you're moving and shooting you are still maintaining some kind of a stance you might be standing from from waist up in a certain way you might be bending your legs in a certain way and walking in a certain way in order to maximize stability and not bouncing and stuff like that. But obviously you're mobile, so mobility's you know, check in the box, right? Uh, so uh, if you're in the kneeling position or even in the prone position, maybe you need to take like a wide kneeling so you can have more stability from not only recoil, but also outside things like somebody brushing past you or, uh, you know, weather, wind, whatever. Uh, so... Uh, anyways, uh, you know, that's in mobility, uh, you need to be able to snap in and out of those positions, which takes practice. You need to actually practice it in order to get efficient in getting, especially out of prone because prone kills mobility. But if you can actually get in and out of those positions efficiently in different situations, then that's really the key. Travis Haley does a great video about that, but I will, uh, I will let you go and search on the U boob on uh, about that so just leave it in the comments below if you want me to uh, like search it for you and give you a link because you're you don't know how to search things on YouTube but anyways next component is grip Mike Glover on in field with fieldcraft survival uh, he is fieldcraft survival really uh, but anyways uh, Mike Glover did a great video that I'll put in the description below on how to acquire a good grip and how to train yourself to get a good grip the principles for a good grip if you are able to get a competent grip and you're able to get an actual grip like from the draw off a countertop or something like that there's a couple principles stability and consistency stability means that you can actually hold that grip for a long time under recoil and consistency means that you get it every time the right way every time okay very simple uh, a lot of people that I have done training with they think they have a good consistent grip but here's what I see I either see milking of the gun like after shooting a couple shots they reacquire their grip or what happens is what I call a cosmetic grip so it looks like it's there but this happens or this happens like you can see this thumb moving back and forth a lot so with mine I don't really uh, shoot all that much so my my thumb will like move around as it needs to and but or I don't I don't uh, push I don't have a gas pedal on my gun I don't believe in the gas pedal thing where I'm pushing into the gun with my with my thumb some people do and some people have the guns that can do it other people um, have guns that don't allow that so whatever I just I just uh, don't touch the frame with my thumbs at all uh, but anyways I uh, as long as you're adhering to the principle of getting good stability and working on consistency and developing it to the point where whenever you grab a gun, you grab it the right way every time, then that's the biggest thing. And the reason why this isn't a fundamental is sometimes you might find yourself where you're barely able to grab onto a gun and pull the trigger and enable this in order to save your life in that situation. There are cases where that's where that may be the case. Okay, uh, but yes, they're rare, but it still qualifies it to be not a fundamental, but a component. So, and it depends on your situation, whether you can add that component to your ability to save your life or achieve the desired task. And how well you implement that component and all these components is going to dictate your ability to uh, accomplish your task, right? And how fast you can. So, 
Uh, th with that said, uh, I found that grip is one of those uh, one of those components that can actually make or break shots, and actually can be very forgiving if you are in if you are not applying other fundamentals such as uh, trigger manipulation or trigger control like a certain way. If you're not if you're just like slapping away at the trigger, a grip can be very forgiving on you being very messy in that sense. And so there's a lot to be said for getting a good grip and getting a consistent grip. So developing certain traits like stronger forearms, stronger shoulders, stronger chest and stuff, and being able to snap into a nice strong grip, there, there's a lot to be said for that. So the next one is sights. So sights, it, this is going to be an interesting discussion. I apologize, it's going to take a minute or two. But uh, when it comes to sights, I think it's absolutely BS that some people will say that with red dots you can stare at the threat, whereas with iron sights you have to stare at the front sight. That's absolute BS because here's the reality of the situation. You need to be staring at the threat and not really like just laser focusing and not processing data, but you're focusing on the threat, you're interpreting what they're doing while you're shooting and you're superimposing your aligned iron sights on them or superimposing your red dot on them. The red dot did not come out and change the way that we use our eyes. The problem is that the firearms community got so stagnant with people just taking what they hear and then just repeating it and not even knowing where it's coming from. That's a big problem. And here's here's the reality of the situation. Front sight focus is just a check in the box. It's a verification. It's a verification that your sights are, are aligned. And then you're supposed to be shifting your focus back to your target and superimposing that those fuzzy aligned sights on on your target and then sending it that front sight focus is a developmental verification tool it is not the tool to ensure that the thing's not moving there are some instructors that would actually say that actually started saying in certain schools uh where front sight focus uh is what you do if you want to make sure that the gun's not moving that has to do with some psychology and yes it is true when you have a visual focus you can prevent certain movements sometimes you can be very sensitive to that but you know what you also see when people are focusing on their front sight then they're focusing on it uh, the gun's not moving the the gun's not moving like left or right or up and down but their whole stance is settling and so you see that I, i've seen that a lot and it's they get so hypnotized by that front sight. Staring at your front sight in combat is kind of like staring at your steering wheel while you're going 100 miles per hour down the road. When I'm going 40, I will watch the road. But when I'm going like 100 miles per hour just to make sure I'm really staying in my lane really well, uh, I will stare at my steering wheel. It's no different. And I believe that it is actually negligent and you are violating the fourth safety rule. Be sure of your target and what lies beyond and in between. How are you doing that when you are saying that everything but the front sight is fuzzy? You know what that means? You have the visual acuity of someone who needs really bad corrective lenses. And that means that you're legally blind at that point. So that's no better than closing your eyes and shooting or looking away and pulling the trigger, in my opinion. That's just what it sounds like if you want to break it down into technical aspects. Because realistically, again... Front sight focus is a verification for you to go ahead and shift back to the target, superimpose those sights where you need it for correct sight picture. Bang. It got adulterated throughout the years. It's time to freaking stop. That is dangerous. It is stupid. And it's unnecessary. It is a developmental thing where people need to verify. And sometimes at long range, you might need to verify again, but then focus back on the threat. Make sure they're actually still a threat when you pull the trigger. Staring at the front sight while pulling the trigger is no different than, you know, violating the force safety rule, in my opinion. Because you can't see what they're doing. You don't know what's going on. You're literally blind, and you're okay with that. Really? No. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave that as it, as it is. So the next is trigger. Uh, so I, I hesitate to call it trigger control. Uh, because sometimes people put too much control on their trigger, they micromanage it to the point where they actually fail at something else called, oh, I don't know, follow-through. Follow-through is just kind of an afterthought. It's just kind of a, uh, it's kind of a component, but it's something that you know, should be kind of a sympathetic thing that they just gave it a name, uh, follow-through. Like, uh, it should be kind of a, you know, a without, 
without being said, you should be following through. Uh, so it shouldn't even be really a thing or a fundamental that people are applying. But uh, um, all follow through really is is being able to shoot again, right? You're you're ready to shoot again if need be. That's all follow through is. There you go. Simple as that. So uh, trigger control. Uh, when you're manipulating a trigger, the principle you need to uh, follow is pull when you need to, relax on the cycling. That's it. Pull when you need to, relax on the cycling. So here's a drill that Ernest Langdon will do with his shooter. So he'll tell him, just shoot one shot and reset the trigger under recoil. So a lot of the students will go, bang, you heard that reset? That means the student failed. Because here's the thing, if I tell you to shoot an entire magazine as fast as possible, are you gonna feel or hear that reset? No? Then why when I tell you to shoot one round and get two sight pictures and to follow through, you can hear the recoil afterwards? Well, I'm taking an accurate shot and I'm trying to eliminate as much movement as possible. Well, here's what you need to develop. You're, you're failing to develop a certain skill here. Here's what needs to happen. Under recoil, relax your trigger finger. And then when the recoil happens, you instantaneously, briefly relax your trigger finger. And I'm telling you, your trigger is going to push your finger out to the reset point. The point is that you just relax it. You don't throw it off. You don't micromanage your trigger all that much. The trigger is going to help by pushing your finger away, trust me, especially on Glocks. The stock Glocks will do it very well. So anyways, just relax your trigger finger and then go back on the wall. It's really not that hard to shoot fast because that's actually what you do. When you're wanting to do it, you're not rolling the trigger or anything. What you're actually doing is just relaxing your trigger finger in between. You're not, you're not consciously doing this. You're not doing any outward movement. You're just relaxing. So you're just relaxing the tension, letting your trigger finger push it back out. That's it. So really, that's all it is. Just relax, dude. Relax. Let the gun do what it does. And, and follow through is a kind of a passive. It's an identification for something that should be passive. When you're shooting your last shot, you always want to be ready to shoot again. That's combat marksmanship, right? So why would you reset the trigger? My sights are on, now I'm gonna reset the trigger. You weren't ready to go. Your sights were on and you weren't even ready to shoot yet. That was a waste of having the sights on. You might as well have, boom, click, you know, to the reset and then align the sights. So anyways, those are the four components of combat marksmanship and how they kind of work uh, in uh, shooting. Now, again, yes, you want to make sure that like your sights are on, uh, you're threatened that you're uh, you're accounting for your sights, right? But if you're in a retention position, it's no longer really a component. It's more just indexing it uh, at your threat uh, from a retention position or from a very close position and just indexing it uh, without even looking at your sights at like three or five yards. You probably won't even need your sights like Aaron Cowan was able to do like the FBI qual with, a, with no sights. So uh, there's a lot of cases where your sights may not be needed, but you still want to have accountability of them. And if you can see your sights or you can at least confirm that your sights are referenced on the target and basically giving you a reference that your shot is going to go where it's supposed to based on your point of aim and your understanding of the point of impact with that point of aim, then you're good to go, I think. So anyways, that's the four components of marksmanship. And uh, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I apologize for the 15 minute video, but I think it was necessary to cover some of these subjects. But anyways, you guys have a good one.